Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Uh, and as another entry in kind of a series I've been doing on, you know, introducing basic data engineering, modern data engineering topics like LLMs, like AI agents, today I want to talk about machine learning um, and really talk it, about it from a beginner's perspective, give you an understanding of exactly what machine learning is, uh, some of the history behind machine learning, its development, how it's evolved from traditional data analytics, uh, and also talk about how you can do machine learning in the modern day and age. Um, so take you from theory, what is machine learning, to practical, how do you do machine learning with moder the modern tech stack, and then talk about some common use cases in the world around us where machine learning is powering operations that are serving uh, things from you know Amazon recommendations to Netflix recommendations um, to really any operation you're doing. If you're uh, making a click, if you're collecting data, if you're producing data, it's probably being used by a machine learning algorithm somewhere. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, and if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Uh, but let's get into it. So first, I want to talk about where kind of machine learning fits into the modern infrastructure age, the modern data age, and why it's so important. Um, and at its core, you know, machine learning allows computers to learn and continually improve on a task without any human intervention. So, you know, you can say, hey, I want you to give me the best recipes. And over time, as people ask a, you know, or, you know, make recipes with this machine learning model, it either says, hey, these recipes are good or they're bad. And it knows hey, I'm gonna now have the information to make better recipes uh, and avoid the, making bad recipes that people don't like. Um, and this is really important because with the rise of big data and just an explosion of data um, across really the universe uh, these days, businesses and researchers require machine learning to process and extract meaning from these vast data sets without requiring a human to actually go through and process and do that kind of human-esque understanding of what these data sets actually mean. Uh, this is where you can say, hey, learn or summarize this data set. You have a machine learning model that knows how to summarize data sets, give you the key attributes like what this data set contains. It is financial records. So you yourself don't have to go in and learn that data set yourself. It also helps to automate complex and repetitive tasks. So you could have a machine learning model that uh, knows how to say, read what you've done on your computer for a day over the day and then fill out a timesheet, right? And so each person has their own machine learning model that understands how they usually spend their day and can automate that filling out at a better rate over time. Additionally, by you know being kind of a uh, completely objective machine resource, you know, not a human biased resource, machine learning models are really good at giving you, you know, objective, effective decision making processes. Um, giving real-time insights and predictions that aren't biased by human desires and wants. And also, on that topic, can learn your desires and wants over time. Um, so, you know, a good example of this is something like a healthcare industry machine, use of machine learning, you know, where you'll have a model for a patient that understands a patient's medical history, how it responds to different treatments and then learns over time and can recommend better treatments as that patient, you know, grows up and over year over year. Um, and also, Unlike static software where it's, you know, hey, this is just performs an operation uh, and it's never gonna get better at that operation, machine learning models can be designed to constantly be getting better and better at the operation they're assigned to do. Um, so you really don't no longer have to worry about, hey, you know, this is gonna become stagnant and out of date over time. You can design processes that grow and evolve just naturally as they're doing them and learning from the processes themselves. So now, how does machine learning work in practice? Um, so machine learning works through you know a very kind of typical or standard process, um, and there's a lot of variations on the specifics. But generally, how it'll work is you collect your training data, the data that you want your machine learning model to learn from, uh, and you, know, you process it, clean it, make sure it's good data for a machine learning model to learn from. Uh, then what you'll do is give that training data to a machine learning model algorithm, um, and there's a bunch of different types of algorithms that are out there, and essentially what different algorithms are designed to do is to use the different parameters in the data set. So you pick a target value, a value that you want to predict the value of. Um, you know, so let's say I'm trying to predict what a customer will buy based on what customers have historically purchased and the attributes about that customer. What I would do is I would feed in the attributes about that customer uh, and then I would use those attributes to try and predict 
uh, using a machine learning model algorithm, so something like a random forest model or uh, k-means, that's a whole other discussion on different types of models, but you'd pick a model, feed that target data, in, or that date, testing data into it, and then use another segment of that data that it hasn't been trained on to then say, hey, does this generate predictions? So this input data here, does this generate accurate predictions based on all that you know input data on what that customer is? Does it actually predict what they were going to buy? And then you can test those predictions against you, the data you actually have the information for to see, hey, was this accurate? Did this actually predict what these customers bought? Or was it unsuccessful? Did it not predict what these customers bought? Um, and then if you know it was successful, great, then you publish that model and other people can use it to you know, feed in their customer attributes and use that to give them an output of, hey, this customer is probably going to buy this. Um, and if it's not, then what you do is you try a different machine learning algorithm. You maybe trim some of the data that you're using. You try and identify, hey, maybe uh, the weight of a customer doesn't really dictate what they're going to buy, but actually their hair color really dictates what they're going to buy. Um, and so it's a, kind of a multi-step process where you're constantly trying to figure out, hey, what are the most relevant values and what is the most relevant data to give me the right predictions and what can give the computer the information it needs to generate the right predictions around this data set. So now that you know kind of hey, how machine learning works, why it's important, how is it used in today's day and age? Um, and there's really it's used pretty much in almost every activity. It's, it's no longer an experiment or like something that's the purview of a data science organization, but it's really become a, a core business enabler across any industry. Um, companies have really spent a lot of time and investment into streamlining ML ops, doing more AI driven automation for real world applications. Uh, and it shows, you know, you have, you know, finance and banking industry leveraging machine learning for things like fraud detection. Uh, cut every transaction that comes in, it gets fed into a machine learning model, which then predicts, is this fra probably fraudulent or is it an okay, fine transaction, normal transaction? Um, also things like algorithmic training, uh, you know, understand feeding information into a machine learning model that says, based on the current state, I predict that the market's gonna go up or down tomorrow. Um, also, things like the healthcare industry, uh, medical diagnosis, AI assisted imagery. So you can say, hey, you know, feed in this MRI scan or this X-ray, and instead of relying on you know, human valuable doctors, you can have AI assisted models that read that image in and predict, is this person gonna get cancer? Is this person going to more risk of this certain disease? Um, and also really helping to do things like drug discovery, um, feeding in you know, machine learning, using really complex machine learning models to predict protein structures and how to build and create new drugs and bring them to market. Um, and then something that you definitely have exposure to is how, you know, AI is, and machine learning is used in retail and e-commerce, um, things like recommendation systems, you know, Amazon, Netflix, when you fill out a, you know, search form, it then uses that for a prediction of saying, hey, what does this person likely want to see? And um, that's where that suggested comes from uh, when you're in your search box. Also things like inventory management, predicting where there's going to be spikes and where you might want to reroute a supply chain to go support uh, you know, a warehouse that's going to be really overwhelmed because you expect this area to be super a new Christmas presents this year. And then in that same vein, manufacturing and logistics. So doing things like supply chain automation, uh, you know, reducing costs and waste and predicting, hey, you know, this person actually doesn't need these resources until then. And so you can hold off so it doesn't build up and become wasteful. Um, and then another big thing that's, you know, always in the news is autonomous self-driving cars. Um, you know, those are really complex AI and machine learning models where every second it's getting fed in to predict, hey, where's this car going to move and trying to use that to then, you know, power its self-driving and understanding of the world around it. Um, and so there's a lot of different use cases for AI and machine learning out there. Um, and it's really used in almost every product or tool you might be touching these days. So within machine learning, there are a ton of different tools out there for you to use. Um, so some popular ML frameworks, and these are tools that you know, give you those algorithms that you can use out of the box. You don't have to design them yourself. Tools like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn. Uh, these are all really great tools for beginners to get started uh, bring, using their pre-built machine learning algorithms, feeding in their own data, tweaking, hey, how does this machine learning algorithm work to give me the best result? Those are great places to get started. 
then you have more complex MLOps tools like MLflow, like Kubeflow, like SageMaker, where you have, you know, really starting to bring machine learning models into production, running them on a regular basis, tracking their performance over time, making sure they are fulfilling the goals and, you know, the, the purposes that they were designed for. Um, and really, you know, just making, you know, giving you the ability to manage not only dozens, but hundreds or thousands of data pipelines of machine learning models all at the same time. Um, and that is really all I have for you today. You know, I just wanted to make a quick intro video to machine learning, how it works, give you some quick guidelines and some understanding of where it's used across the world today. If you thought this video was helpful, if you want to see me take this in any other future directions, let me know. I'm more than happy to. Um, I really just want to make sure I'm providing the best service to you guys, my viewers. Uh, so I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope you enjoy your weekends. Data guy out.